Reprise the debate. Continuing debate, the Honourable Member for Sturgeon River Parkland. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak on Bill C-21, a piece of legislation that I've engaged with very closely over the past seven months as a member of the Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security. And from my many months working on this bill, I can only conclude that Bill C-21 is not about public safety. If it was about public safety, this bill would have sought to deal with the disastrous bail and parole policies, which have led to many violent repeat offenders being released back onto our streets to commit more acts of violence. Unfortunately, it did not. What Bill C-21 is really about is politics. It's about pitting one group of Canadians against another through fear, misleading policies, and willful ignorance about the reality of lawful firearms ownership in this country. Canada is a peaceful country. Since the 1970s, Canada has experienced a significant reduction in violent crime. Only the past eight years of this Liberal government has broken that long-standing trend, with a staggering 32% increase in violent crime since 2015. Unfortunately, instead of addressing this staggering 32% increase, the Liberals have chosen to target hunters and sports shooters instead. Now, Statistics Canada has released very interesting data on firearms and violent crime. A report released this past December dealt specifically with violent crime in Canada involving firearms in 2021. The data showed that of all instances of violent crimes recorded in Canada, a rifle or shotgun was only present at 0.47% of cases, less than half a percent. And out of this 0.47%, it's not clear how many of these could be classified as so-called assault-style firearms. The number could be very close to zero, but it's far likely that it's less than that 0.47%, which include all rifles and shotguns. Bill C-21 is not public safety legislation. The amendments that define an assault-style rifle do not address the firearms that are being commonly used by criminals. The guns being used by criminals are primarily smuggled illegal handguns and high-capacity magazine weapons that are already illegal in Canada. While C-21 formalizes the so-called handgun freeze, which prevents any new registration certificates for handguns, it's quite obvious that the handguns being used by criminals to commit violence in our streets are not registered firearms. So this so-called freeze does nothing to stop the criminals. It only prevents law-abiding people from owning a handgun. And when I asked the officials at committee to provide evidence to demonstrate that this handgun freeze will reduce violent crime, they couldn't provide any evidence. Now, the Liberals have been clear that their end goal is to eliminate legal ownership of guns in Canada. Other than possibly reducing instances of legal guns being stolen or straw purchased, which is extremely rare for obvious reasons, this does nothing to address the real problem, which are smuggled handguns and the emergence of ghost guns. Now, there was agreement at committee that the issue of ghost guns needs to be dealt with, and that is why Conservatives supported multiple amendments that made it an offence to distribute instructions to manufacture ghost guns with the intent to produce illegal firearms. We also supported adding regulations and penalties regarding essential firearms parts, which can be used to assemble ghost guns. Unfortunately, despite the best intentions, I fear that these policies will do little to deter those who plan to use this emerging technology for criminal purposes. After all, anyone who is in illegal possession of one of these ghost guns is already in contravention of the criminal code. Additional charges for the possession of schematics or essential firearms components is unlikely to dissuade these criminals who are already committing a crime. Now, Bill C-21 is also not about public safety because the so-called yellow and red flag laws are unnecessary and are potentially harmful to victims. In fact, the Liberals and the NDP both rammed through these so-called red flag laws over the very strong opposition of women's groups who rightfully pointed out that forcing women to go to court to obtain an order to cease firearms is not practical, nor is it safe. In fact, I received a very kind message from one of these advocates advocacy groups thanking Conservatives for voting for what in their words were their most important amendment and they noted that the Liberals voted against this amendment. Now another reason why these red and yellow flag laws are so unnecessary is because police have already been clear that they have the authority without a warrant to act immediately to seize firearms if they determine there is a risk. Canada already has red and yellow flag laws. I even read recently about a gentleman in the Ottawa area who has hunted his
his entire life. Now, during the pandemic, sadly, his wife and a sibling died, and the mental toll caused him to check into a local hospital. While he presented no threat, his firearms were seized proactively. He had to go to court and convince a judge why he should be allowed to have them back, and the judge sided with him. Clearly, we already have yellow flag laws in existence in Canada, as the above case demonstrates. Now, it should go without saying that Canada is not the United States. While going to court to seize firearms may be necessary in the United States, it is not the case in Canada. As I said before, in Canada, when there is a threat, the police have the authority to act immediately without a warrant to secure firearms. Unfortunately, these Liberals will spend more time role-playing as members of the U.S. Congress rather than addressing the distinct issues that exist here in Canada. Now, finally, in what I see is the clearest demonstration of the punitive nature of C-21, we look at the exemption for Olympic sports shooters. Groups like the International Practical Shooting Confederation came to committee to plead for an exemption for their sport, but were rejected by the Liberals. There has been no evidence presented at committee that IPSC, cowboy action shooting, or any other high-level sports shooting discipline posed any risk to public safety, and yet they were treated with utter contempt by the Liberal Party. Now, the pressure is so high in the Liberal caucus to shut down any shooting sports in Canada that they even tried to silence one of their own members at committee who expressed concerns about this heavy-handed ban. The MP for King's Hans raised a very good point about a constituent who competed internationally with IPSC, and through no fault of his own, his sporting firearm was lost by Air Canada. Now, because of Bill C-21, he will never be able to pursue his passion again. Even in countries like the United Kingdom, where handguns are completely banned, there are exemptions for IPSC and sports shooting. The Liberals provided no public safety justification for this move. They have determined that their objective is to eliminate all legal handgun ownership in Canada, and they could not allow an IPSC exemption because it would allow a small group of people to continue pursuing their passion. Now, this brings me to the real reason C-21 was created. The Liberals can try and point to raising maximum penalties for smugglers, but this is just a fig leaf to cover the real purpose of the bill. The real purpose of this bill is the sterilization of the culture of legal sports shooting in Canada. It is well known in the firearms community that ranges are funded by dues-paying members who are required by legislation to be a range member as a condition of a restricted license. Without any new license holders, the income for gun ranges will dry up, leading to the closure of almost every gun range in Canada. The prevention of any sport shooting exemption beyond Olympic level sports ensures that only a very elite few, we're talking about maybe a couple people, will be able to legally acquire a handgun in Canada. And I am also very concerned about their firearms advisory committee. And it appears to me that this advisory committee will not be very independent and that the Liberals have already prejudged what kind of firearms will be banned, including many commonly used hunting rifles. The effects of this will reverberate throughout the country as firearms retailers shut down, trade shows close shop, and sports shooting clubs close due to lack of members. That is the Liberal agenda in black and white. The wholesale elimination of an entire part of our country's culture and heritage, passions enjoyed by millions of Canadians through generations. Maybe if there were a public safety reason for all this, we could do a cost-benefit analysis. But there was no evidence provided, and there is no truth to the claims that this will improve public safety. This legislation demonizes a group of law-abiding Canadians for the political benefit of the Liberal Party. It also provides a convenient distraction from the abject failure of Liberal ideology to keep our communities safe. After all, has the country ever become safer since C-71 was implemented, or the May 2020 OIC, or since there are handgun freeze came in. Has it stopped handgun violence in our streets? Absolutely not. This country has only descended further into violence and lawlessness. The NDP had an opportunity to take a stand on the side of hunters and sport shooters, and instead they sold out they would not support conservative amendments to ensure exemptions for sport shooters and for hunters, and instead they chose to prop up a Liberal government. The fact is they had the support. They could have, we could have united together. And I've been getting calls in my office from uh, people who live in the riding of Edmonton Grease Block because they can't get through to their NDP member to tell them how upset they are with the NDP's stance on this bill. Now, Conservatives will always stand up for law-abiding firearms owners. We're going to stand up against this punitive C-21 legislation, which does nothing to improve public safety in this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Questions and comments, uh, the Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In his uh, discussion today, the member uh, talked about, and he specifically said, this is Canada, it's not the United States. And I find this interesting because another member earlier referenced uh, the United States and a, an American politician. Um, yes, it's not uh, the United States. In the United States, uh, our, the ownership of firearm is a right. In Canada, it's a privilege. There's a big difference between the two. I'm wondering if the member can comment as to whether or not he believes that a privilege is the right system and the right environment to own firearms in Canada, or if he believes they should be a right like they are in the United States. The Honourable Member for Sturgeon River Parkland. I believe that Canada has a robust system of firearms laws that have largely worked for generations. And it's ironic because it, it is the Liberal Party of Canada which is intent on importing American culture war politics into this country. I cite none other than the member of Markham Unionville when he brought forward the amendments that they had to withdraw who said we need to bring in California style gun control laws. That was the Liberal member for Markham Unionville saying we needed California style gun control laws in this country. I am a Canadian and I believe in Canadian solutions and I reject American solutions for Canadians. Yeah. Thank you. Questions and comments? Question commentaire, uh, l'honorable député de Beau. The honorable member for Beauport Limano. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I listened to my colleague carefully. And now concerning recreational shooting, I listened to what he said, and I really have to wonder. Section 45 of C21 protects sport shooters to make sure that they can continue uh, to, to practice. And with Motion 12, the Conservatives themselves called for that section to be withdrawn. And that would mean that recreational shooters would be exempted and protected so that they can continue to practice that sport. So where's the consistency there? The Honourable Member. Well, Mr. Speaker, what the government really put forward was that anyone who currently had uh, a re like a restricted license, who had possession of one of these firearms in Canada, yes, they can continue to use these firearms. But part of this legislation is that there can be no new applications other than a very narrow exemption for Olympic sports shooters. And, uh, you know, there was a member from the Liberals talking earlier about this great Olympic exemption, and I would say to that member, how would they become an Olympic-level kayaker if the government said they were never allowed to buy a kayak in the first place to practice? So what this government is really doing is they are putting a time limit on a uh, culture of responsible firearms ownership in this country, and, and over a number of decades it's going to die out, and, and uh, we're going to lose this important part of our culture. So it's not a protection in the least. Thank Thank you. SCI Commentar, the Honourable Member for New Westminster, Burnaby. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the member. I appreciate his work on committee. Conservatives voted with uh, the Bloc, uh, the NDP and, and the Liberals on almost all of the amendments that were brought forward in the marathon sessions last week. I also appreciate that he's been the first Conservative to admit that G4 and G46, those Liberal amendments that have been part of the Conservative talking points now for months, were actually withdrawn. So appreciate his honesty in admitting that the Conservative talking points were false. Now, Mr. Speaker, I, of course, I get calls from Alberta. Who, these are constituents that are in Alberta ridings. They can't reach their Alberta Conservative MP at all, and so they contact me in British Columbia. And one of the concerns they raise is about criminal activity and ghost guns. And the reality is, Bill C-21 deals with ghost guns in a substantive way. So the member was talking about cracking down on criminals. Criminals use ghost guns. Law enforcement needs this legislation. Why did the Conservatives filibuster it for weeks and weeks and weeks? I remember for Sturgeon River Parkland. Well, I'll say the NDP were quite thankful for the filibuster back in December when they were still deciding what stand they were going to take in support of our hunters and sports shooters. The NDP had no idea which way they were going to swing on this issue, and I actually was thanked by the NDP at the time, saying thank you for the time uh, so that I can take this back to my caucus so we can actually figure out what we're doing on this. So you're welcome from the Conservative Party uh, for giving you that extra time so you could finally find the right path forward. Um, but as for this withdrawn G4 and G46 amendments, 
sense. The government is introducing a backdoor mechanism so that they can achieve the very same ends, and the NDP supported on that. This Firearms Advisory Committee, uh, I fear, is not going to be an independent committee. I believe the government's already prejudged what kind of firearms they're going to ban, and they're just putting forward this front group so that they can do the dirty work for the government. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.